Jane's best friend, Olivia, strives to maintain her usual routine without letting the loss of her loved one affect her. Olivia is an exceptionally ambitious girl, excelling in her studies, exercising every morning, volunteering for Joseph's charity, leading the debate club as its captain, and aspiring to attend Stanford University. The pressure resulting from a combination of college application concerns and an overwhelming workload, all while suppressing her grief, begins to take its toll on Olivia. She has distanced herself from her neighbor Izzy, who used to be close to both Jane and Olivia. This left Olivia to cope with Jane's death in solitude. One afternoon, Olivia consults with Counselor Billings about the low acceptance rate of their school into Stanford University, but Billings reassures her that it's just an average statistic. Afterward, Olivia leads the debate club to another victory in the regional championship, earning praise from Mr. Richardson, the club's advisor. He introduces Olivia to Camille, a recent transfer student who will join the club. Although Olivia isn't enthusiastic about welcoming new members, she puts on a facade for the sake of the team. Once Olivia submits her application to Stanford, she becomes preoccupied with refreshing the website constantly. Instead of sleeping, she looks up Camille on social media and becomes envious of the supportive comments from Camille's friends. The following day, during class breaks, Olivia checks the Stanford website on her phone and discovers that her application has been deferred. This news pushes her closer to a breaking point, and she experiences a sudden hallucination of Jane in the school corridor, causing her to vomit in the bathroom. Coincidentally, Camille is also in the bathroom but remains silent, making Olivia feel as though fate is mocking her. Later, Olivia seeks comfort from Counselor Billings and finally allows herself to cry. Billings attempts to guide Olivia through her grief, but Olivia fixates on the idea of sending a personal appeal to Stanford's administration board. In the debate club, Olivia discovers that she's not the first one to arrive, as Camille is already chatting with Mr. Richardson. To make matters worse, Richardson partners Olivia with Camille for practice, leading to an anxiety attack that causes Olivia to faint. When she regains consciousness, Olivia sees Jane once more. Another blow comes when Richardson informs her that she won't be participating in the upcoming weekend's tournament due to her condition. Olivia rushes to her car to vent her anger. Izzy spots her and, out of concern, offers Olivia a ride. Back at home, Olivia tries to exit the car quickly after expressing gratitude, but Izzy insists on giving her a hug revealing that she also misses Jane. The following day at school, Olivia overhears Camille discussing that she's temporarily taking over as captain for the weekend's competition. Olivia's anxiety intensifies, and she begins seeing Jane in the mirror. Surprisingly, Izzy approaches Olivia, offering her a ride again, which she declines. However, Olivia seizes the opportunity and asks Izzy to have coffee with her, reminiscent of their old times. They chat, and Olivia vents her frustrations about Camille. Intrigued, Izzy searches for information about Camille, revealing that she framed her previous teacher for harassment. Izzy suggests using this information to blackmail Camille, but Olivia hesitates, believing it's crossing a moral line. During the weekend, Olivia attends the debate competition and becomes increasingly irritated by Camille's impressive performance, causing her to reconsider exposing Camille. Olivia confides in Izzy and shows her Camille's court order, unsure of how to proceed without getting into trouble. Izzy proposes creating an anonymous social media account on Connect 
a widely used platform. Olivia agrees, but their plans are interrupted when Izzy discovers that Jane's account is still logged in on her old computer. After the initial shot, Olivia suggests using Jane's account to further confuse Camille, which Izzy accepts, believing Jane would appreciate the prank. They initiate their scheme by sending Camille a private message, attaching a screenshot of the court order, accusing her of repeating her past actions with Richardson. The girls add Jane's account to their phones, enabling them to continue tormenting Camille through direct messages during class breaks. With this new development, Olivia revisits her appeal letter and shows it to Billings, who advises her that the appeal letter lacks a personal touch. Things take a further downturn later when Mrs. West announces to the entire class that their papers were disappointing. Later, Camille is summoned to the principal's office, and when the girls check social media, they find that Camille's profile has disappeared. Olivia experiences a tinge of guilt, but Izzy reminds her that this is what she wanted. Olivia then approaches Richardson, apologizing for her behavior and expressing willingness to share leadership with Camille. Richardson informs her that Camille has transferred again, which pleases Olivia. In the afternoon, Olivia suggests to Izzy that they use Jane's account to deal with Mrs. West. The entire class bursts into laughter and West becomes unhinged, checking every student's computer in search of the prankster, resorting to name-calling. Olia watches with satisfaction as West leaves the school with her belongings after being fired. The sight of Jane in the corridor no longer scares Olivia. Principal Rhodes visits the classroom to inquire about the incident, and Olivia explains that everyone witnessed the prank. Later, Olivia and Izzy notice that Jane's account has gained an enormous number of followers, which would have delighted Jane. The power they now wield is exhilarating, and they decide to use Jane's account to post about various everyday occurrences in school, embarrassing and cyberbullying random students under the guise of their deceased friend. At a later time, Olivia discovers Izzy hanging up a Stanford flag because she has been accepted by the university. Although Izzy feels guilty that she was accepted while Olivia wasn't, Olivia assures her it's okay. However, once Izzy leaves, Olivia breaks down in tears and sees Jane appearing to take the flag down. Olivia quickly rehangs it, but the incident continues to haunt her affecting her performance at the next debate competition, which they lose. In the evening, Izzy pays Olivia a visit with a bottle of wine. After spending some time together, Izzy reveals that she came to ask Olivia to accompany her to a party at her ex's house, as she needs moral support. Upon their arrival, they notice that Izzy's ex has already moved on and is flirting with Josa whom everyone sees as the embodiment of kindness. However, Izzy disagrees, believing Joseph flirts with everyone, including those in relationships, and suspects she may have a hidden addiction issue. When Joseph attempts to greet Olivia, Izzy becomes jealous and sends her away rudely, then drags Olivia to the bathroom to vent her frustrations. Izzy proposes a plan and puts some substances in a bottle of juice, which she offers to Josa with a fake apology, toasting to her. The juice causes Josa to loosen up and dance energetically with everyone. During a break, Olivia confesses to Izzy that this is the happiest she's been in months, and Izzy apologizes for having distanced herself from Olivia and Jane. Their moment is interrupted when Josa has a negative reaction to the juice and faints. Among the concerned crowd, Olivia swears she can see Jane recording the scene. Several hours later, 
Olivia's phone is bombarded with notifications because a video of Joseph fainting is going viral on Jane's account. Both Olivia and Izzy insist they didn't post it, and neither of them remembers recording it. Olivia suggests refraining from posting anything else until the situation settles, but Izzy has had enough and deletes Jane's profile. The following morning, both Izzy and Olivia notice that someone has somehow reactivated Jane's account. When Principal Rhodes summons Olivia to her office for questioning, Olivia lies, claiming she didn't notice anything unusual at the party and hasn't interacted with Jane's account since her death. This falsehood is reinforced when Jane appears in the office, asking for secrecy. While leaving, Olivia overhears Rhodes speaking with a computer expert on the phone, requesting assistance in tracing the IP addresses linked to Jane's account. She rushes out of the building. She begins to see Jane's face in every person outside before eventually passing out. Izzy finds her and brings her to her house to recover. During her recovery, Olivia confides in Izzy about the IP investigation prompting Izzy to consider coming clean to minimize the scandal. She then comes up with an idea. She goes to Izzy's dad's office to check the router with a VPN site, only to discover a collection of Stanford merchandise. This discovery raises questions about whether Izzy got into Stanford herself. Olivia lies to Izzy, reassuring her that there's nothing to be concerned about because she has confirmed that her parents use a VPN service. The following day, Olivia encounters Camille at a coffee shop, where Camille takes a moment to apologize for her previous behavior during their club meetings. Camille explains that she wasn't in a good mental state when she transferred because of a teacher who had harassed her in her previous school and the faculty had covered it up and blamed her. Overwhelmed by guilt, Olivia begins to see Jane again and she rushes to the bathroom to have a breakdown. She now even sees Jane in her own reflection, leading her to shatter the mirror in anger. Upon returning home, Olivia decides to delete all the posts she made on Jane's account, all while Jane watches her. The next day, Izzy informs Olivia that Joseph has been accepted into Stanford, which makes Olivia wonder if the party incident was intentional on her part. Olivia denies any intention behind it, but when Izzy leaves, Olivia contemplates writing an email to Rhodes, suggesting that Izzy is behind Jane's account. However, she cannot bring herself to send it and abandons the idea. In the afternoon, as Olivia prepares for another debate competition, she receives a call from Izzy, who is furious upon discovering that the VPN excuse was a lie and that Olivia had deleted all of Jane's posts. Izzy believes Olivia is planning to blame her for everything, and she intends to confess to Rhodes first. Fearing being caught, Olivia rushes to Izzy's place to convince her not to confess, but Izzy refuses to listen and accuses Olivia of hiding behind when Izzy tries to call Rhodes, Olivia tries to stop her, resulting in a struggle that ends with Izzy drowning in the pool. Devastated and grieving, Olivia's smartwatch reminds her of the upcoming competition. She composes herself and devises a plan. She places two bricks in Izzy's pockets and leaves her body in the pool to make it appear as if she had taken her own life. Olivia then showers and borrows a dress from Izzy's closet, ensuring she removes all evidence of her presence in the house. Lastly, she takes Izzy's computer and posts on her account, making it seem like Izzy is confessing to using Jane's account and ending things due to realizing the harm she had caused. With everything in place, Olivia hurries back to the debate competition, where she excels, earning her team a spot in the nationals. However, they discover news about Izzy through social media, leading Olivia 
Olivia to be sent home to speak with the police. Olivia tells the officers a fabricated story, convincing them with fake tears. When questioned about the conversation with Izzy earlier, Olivia pretends that Izzy had merely wished her good luck. A few days later, Olivia completes her appeal letter for Stanford, using her friendship with Izzy as a sob story and the inspiration behind her desire to study mental health and help people like her two deceased friends. During the next debate competition, Olivia can see Jane in the audience, wearing a proud smile, signifying that she has achieved what she desired.